The war on terror in the Middle East is being fought on many fronts, and one method has drawn quite a bit of controversy. Unmanned area vehicles, we know them as drones. They're being used primarily in places like Pakistan to take out Taliban hideouts. But now they're for sale stateside, and many fear domestic, domestic use could get out of control. News 13's Frank Crocker has tonight's reality check. No matter how you might feel about drones, they are here. From hobbyists to entrepreneurs to police agencies, there is a high level of interest, but also concern that the ability to attack a foreign enemy could translate to an attack on personal privacy on the home front. They look sleek and sinister, almost shark-like, ideal for the mission. Drones deliver a deadly payload, a sneak attack with no risk for the person behind the remote. But drones aren't just for the battlefield anymore. Much smaller, yet still sophisticated models are being flown by a growing number of hobbyists. Mass marketed, affordable UAVs, even equipped with navigational GPS to find their way back home. There is no doubt all this drone technology is very cool, but once you add another component, the camera, that's where the concern comes in, the issue of privacy. Look at Google Earth. <laughs> you can, what can it pick up now? Things the size of a pack of cigarettes from outer space? I mean, the technology's there already. Bob Mitchell's an amateur photographer who believes fear of drones is overblown. He puts them up to take pretty pictures. But during heavy storms back in July, Bob flew one over that big sinkhole in Weaverville. He wanted to demonstrate a practical use, an inexpensive bird's eye view to assess the damage. Now he would like to use his high-tech toys to make some money. Eventually, when the FAA allows it, I would like to turn it into an aerial photography business, and I'd like to see some reasonable regulations to keep it safe. Commercial use of drones is forbidden. They can be flown no higher than 400 feet, no closer than three miles to any airport. But that's a safety standard that's almost impossible to enforce. I'm worried about them hitting us or us hitting them. George Dance flies his single-engine aircraft out of the Hendersonville airport. It's right around airfields that small plane pilots operate low and slow, and the number of drones is skyrocketing. If you add 10 times more of that stuff, you know, the ch chances are going to be 10 times greater to getting hit with it or flying into it. A number of local law enforcement uh, bodies are, are waiting for the FAA to weigh in. North Carolina ACLU legal director Chris Brook has a different sort of safety concern. The Fourth Amendment, you know, has been around since the 18th century, equally applicable uh, to drones. UAVs provide a surveillance platform like none other, perhaps the perfect police stakeout tool of the future. Cadillac subject just pulled a, an assault rifle out of the back of the Cadillac. The level of invasion, uh, the ability to surveil that a drone offers is sort of different in scope and magnitude uh, than other technologies. And the government needs to have a good reason and typically needs to have a warrant if they're going to uh, subject American citizens to that sort of scrutiny. As for American citizens using drones on each other, the risks are limitless. The new age equivalent of peeping over your neighbor's fence. It's like everything else. There's going to be bad players unless they outright ban the use of, of uh, UAVs. Um, there's always going to be the potential for someone to do bad things with them. Congress had directed the FAA to come up with a set of guidelines and a permitting process by 2015, but the agency says it will not make that deadline. Several states have already placed their own heavy restrictions on drones ahead of any federal ruling. At least 30 others, including North and South Carolina, are considering legislation to limit law enforcement use or even ban UAVs altogether.